All right, so we're going into part two of the of the video. Um, we here with, the, with Kyle Tep right now. So, how can the people reach you, man? You have a Facebook page. People can look you up, or you have some questions about anything that you said today. Yeah. How can they reach you? Definitely, definitely. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Kyle Hotel. You know, um, you know, look me up. You know, check out some of the posts that I'll be putting up. You know, um, putting up things that try to help wake up our people. You know, um, things for them to, you know. Turn a light switch, uh, a light bulb on in their head to say, "Look, maybe I need to go see, um, validate this or anything." You know, so yeah, definitely look me up on, on Facebook, brother Kyle Tip, or Kyle Tip. You know, and um, we're gonna get it in. Cool, cool. So we was getting into um, my eye before yes. we ended the first video. Yes. yes. So um, give your understanding of what my eye is, and you know your knowledge on what my my eye is. Um. Okay, my eye basically is um is balance, it's truth, you know, it's justice, righteousness, you know, um and they also had principles, you know, the forty two negative confessions, you know. Mm -hmm. And what's what what's crazy about that, you know, or should have you questioning is why do we find a lot of the Ten Commandments right there in the my eye or the forty two negative confessions, you know. Thou shalt not kill sounds a whole lot like I have not slain man or woman. Mm, mm, you know, mm. thou shalt not covenant thy neighbor's wife sounds a lot like I have not covenant mm -hmm. thy neighbor's wife. Mm, so mm. basically all they did, they took the I have not and changed it to thou shalt not. Okay. You know, okay. and you don't find this this in just one place. Mm. This is all over. Mm -hmm. You know, this is these mm -hmm. people. This was, this was their way of life. I mean, they were way deeper. You know, I have not taken food from a child. You know, I right. have not acted out in anger. And just so the people, so some people may not, even Christians, you call yourself a Christian, but you don't even know this information. It's something that you might have to, you might want to question yourself. Um, the Ten Commandments was brought to the people, which were the Hebrews, right? Right. By Moses, right? Yeah. So people, some people may not even know the history of Moses, don't, don't even know that he grew up as an adopted son of the Egyptian king. Exactly. And he grew up with the knowledge knowing um, with the knowledge of a prince basically yes. he was taught as a prince you cannot tell me that this man grew up as an egyptian prince and never studied the 42 laws of my eye okay. it's, 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 it's impossible it's impossible so when he created the, well the ten commandments was given to him by god he had the knowledge also of the 42 laws of my eye already so God gave him 10 laws that he already knew? That he already knew. Plus 32. Plus, so you have to, you have to question <laughs> So you have to question these things. And, and, and it gets funny, like, how could that be? And then another thing, if he grew up as an Egyptian prince, when did he ever have turned to learn Hebrew? When did he start speaking Hebrew right. and understanding the Hebrew language? Right. What language was the Ten Commandments put in there? You know what I mean? Because he grew up as an mm. Egyptian prince. Mm. He was around, what, 40 years old when he had to flee. Right. You know, right. and 40 years of knowledge as an Egyptian as prince. An Egyptian Not prince. two, three years. 40 years as an Egyptian prince. He understood and lived as an Egyptian. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to question yourself. Like, how do you go 40 years learning the principles and the concept, the culture, the way of life as an Egyptian? Mm -hmm. And then... You all of a sudden you go into Hebrew, and but all, when you when you go into Hebrew, a lot of the things that the Egyptians was already practicing, you bringing that with you, right? You know, so it's like right. we have to we have to start understanding that we have to get in these texts and we have to put things in chronological order. You know, what was here first, and if the thing was here first, who was practicing it? What language it was in? What region or, or what geographical location was it? So you can understand and see how the the information store of migrating, but where did it originate from? And I have to play devil's advocate a little bit. Cool. Because with that information, you know, if you're going to study the Bible, I think the best understanding you should study, study it under is with the understanding as a Hebrew. Yeah. Because the Hebrews at least know this information. They know Moses uh, grew up as an Egyptian prince. You talk to Christians and they have no idea no what you're idea. talking about. Exactly. So I will have to give it to the Hebrew Israelites. They have more of an understanding, a better understanding of biblical knowledge than mm -hmm. the average Christian. I, I would so totally agree. If you are a Christian, if you if, if you subscribe to the Bible, I would 
suggested you would subscribe to it as a Hebrew, not as a Christian. I would that's agree. My, that's my personal belief. I, I mean, but, just um, to piggyback on what he said, I definitely, definitely agree. Um, like I said, when I got into the knowledge of where I'm going, where I'm at today, it came because I was following, you know, Hebrew Israelites. You know, I was listening to Tazari Yaakov, ISUPK. Mm -hmm. You know, I was listening to General Yohanna. Mm -hmm. And when I was able to, I mean, you can ask a Hebrew a question or a, a situation. They can go right there to the scripture. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. give me Matthew. Right. Give me. They so it. I'm like, they like yo, it. these brothers really study. Right. You know, there is more than just going to church and getting a, a, a scripture or two. And then we just start talking about right. Things that's gonna make you feel good. Right. These brothers actually do study right. they, they they scripture. You know and, what I mean? And even though I subscribe to the comedic science, I love listening to um Hebrew scholars like uh Prince Daniela. Yes. Um Hashar. Hashar. Hashar is my dude. I love Hashar. Shout out to Hashar. Hashar give it to you raw and real. I respect Hashar to the fullest. Yes, sir. So this is what um some of the things we discussed um prior to recording is how can we bridge the gap between Hebrew Israelites, Kemetic science, um, Christians, and all of these things. Um, Moors. Moors. Muslims. Um, you know. Muslims. Um, since we own the subject of Christians, would you be willing to sit down and have a discussion and compare notes between Kemetic science and, and the Christian faith with a Christian man, woman, female, whoever? Definitely. I mean... Um I feel that it's something that's definitely needed. I mean, it wouldn't be to um, um, bash our brothers or sisters, you mm -hmm. know, because at the end of the day, we are brothers and sisters. Exactly. exactly. You know, we, at the end of the day, you know, um, we are all in the same situation of being descendants of the people that were kidnapped mm -hmm. and brought here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, we, and we're all trying to find our true story because nobody knows we none of us know our true story no, you know right. we Correct. we don't we don't know our native tongue mm. we don't know mm. our the culture our ancestors practiced mm. before they was born here you know so um i definitely wouldn't be trying to beat them up it would just to be to get the information out so we can come together right with a plan right. to get us out of our situation we're in yeah because our, our our what our goal is not to beat up on the christians we love um, our Christian brothers, our Muslim, Hebrew, Israelite brothers, our Kemetic brothers. We love all people. What we are against are, um, what we say, uh, pimping uh, pastors. Yeah, I mean. Who are misleading the people. Those are the people we, uh, we don't agree with. You know, but if you're a member of the church and you go in there to um, seek out the higher power, to seek knowledge, to get some kind of camaraderie with, with your people, mm -hmm. we have no problem with it with you. We, we want to sit down and actually discuss and compare notes and see how can we bridge the gap and come together as a community. You know, we're not here to um, bash Christians, bash Muslims, bash Hebrew Israelites. Like, all we want to do is, is, is create some kind of unity, some kind of bridge that we all could come together and be one. I don't even know what, but we just to be one, to be, one. To be connected. You know? Exactly. I mean, because like when you go into the black community and you are able to see a church on every corner mm -hmm. you know when you're driving through any black community but you see the neighborhood how run down it is hmm. you know and it's like okay you going to church you know sunday morning hmm. sunday evening you know you're going to have something going on monday <laughs> you know then you got you got monday bible on, study you got monday you got wednesday bible study mm -hmm. you know friday you may have this you know in in every service you are passing the collection plate mm. why that money is not building up that community. Why the the church is not coming together to say, look, see that building right there? Mm. We about to go buy buy that. Mm. And then once once we create that business there, we're gonna have our church members running it. Mm. You know, so now we creating economics mm. in the church. Mm. You know, why these things right here are not happening. You know, so it's like it doesn't make any sense because that, that makes perfect sense what you're saying, you know, and and it makes it a lot easier for the members to remain members if you're exactly. employing them, if you're giving them um, ways to feed their family. You know, you're taking in minimum $50,000 on, on Sunday. How, mm -hmm. how much does it take to take the corner store that's on the, on the corner, buy the store, and now you, 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 you have a business for um, at-risk teenagers. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're doing these kind of things. Exactly. And, and guess what? That, that business needs to be it needs supplies. So you know what you do? You go out and get you a, uh, a truck. 
this you know this man. He you know he he, he when he came to church, he's a, he's been, he's a felon. Mm -hmm. He can't get a job, but he can get a CDL. Or he got a CDL. He got something. He got a driver's license. Give this man a job. That 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 store needs to be supplied. Let that man, you know what I'm saying, drive the truck to, to supply the store. I mean, they but instead of instead of doing that, the pastor got a Benz every week. He got a he got a a, a two thousand dollar suit. He got right. a nice a nice house, you know. So it's like, um, and every five years he he building a new church. Like, come on, man! Like, y'all you know really, really think God is coming to the church to pick up that collection money? Do y'all really? Where, and the money is going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Follow. Well, the money goes, mm -hmm. and you can see what's going on with the money of the right. church. Right. You know, it shouldn't. Right. You shouldn't be going to your church. I know people that goes. To, that went to the church for help, mm -hmm. for financial help. You know, and the church was not able to come through for them. Mm. You know, but they've been members to this church for years. You know, so it's like um, I don't know if you saw this. I don't mean to cut you off, but I saw. Today on Facebook, there was a church. It was out here in Houston, actually. It was um, a member of the church. She was like a 90-something-year-old woman. She had been sick for the last two years, so she hadn't been able to attend the church, and she wasn't able to pay her dues. The pastor refused to funeralize this woman because she wasn't up to date with her uh, member dues. The mother, the, 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 um, the mother, I mean, the, the child of... The woman was begging the pastor, mm -hmm. please, my mother has been a member here for 50 years. Wow. 50 years. And she had been sick, and she just wasn't able to pay her dues. She, that's why she hasn't been here. The pastor refused to funeralize this woman because she was not up to date with her membership fees. And what he said to the family was, well, why didn't the family, the, his, her family, send in at least a dollar each Sunday to keep her membership. That's what he said though. Like, yo, y'all could have just at least send a dollar every Sunday to keep her membership. Wow. A dollar? A dollar. I mean, so, <laughs> I mean that's that's crazy. That's that's like a business. Right. You know I mean, that's that's hey. You know, what kind of what kind of what kind of pastors do we have in leadership at these churches where you won't even funeralize a woman? You're not creating any kind of economics for your for your members. You telling these people to uh, come drop their ten percent every Sunday, but you're not giving them any kind of support other than emotional support. You know, you know these people. Some of these members are not able to go out in the workforce. What about what about job training? Yeah. What about um, resume writing? You know, none yeah, of these things you can get from the church. I mean, it, no, the the church is not giving you. Um, I mean, the church is in a position right now, and I always been that they can do so much. To, for for a community, especially if churches were networking together. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if you got a church on every corner in the black community, why are these churches not coming together and putting their money in and rebuilding it? We don't have to be asking nobody to, you know, um, put money into our community because mm -hmm. we know the politicians are not going to do that. They're mm -hmm. not going to direct any money mm -mm. into our community. But we have the power to do it ourselves, but the people that we are giving that money to is doing personal things with it. I mm. mean, we're just going to keep it a book. You know, so, we're going to keep it a hundred. With that being said, how... When you look at Christians, you want, do you wonder, like, where do they, where does their faith come from? If they're not getting anything that's tangible other than emotional um, support on Sunday, mm -hmm. where, where do they get their faith from? Where is the, what is the foundation of their faith? Is, it, is their faith built on, I'm sorry, not their faith, but you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, is it, help me out here. What am I trying well, to say here? Help me out. Like, but what I'm feeling you're saying is like, what are they getting from going to church every Sunday that's keeping them there, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, you're not seeing anything prosper in your life. Mm -mm. Um, I would say today is because... This is not what we our ancestors brought here with them when they were brought to this land. Mm -hmm. This was forced upon our people. They did not have the 1611 King James <laughs> version of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so it, it starts right there. And if this is not original, this is not our culture, how can we make this work for us if it's not our culture? Mm -hmm. You know, so they have to understand that, um, you know, I like you, because you'll hear Christians say something like this here. You know, this is how they deal with 
not being able to have the life that they're looking for because a mm -hmm. lot of Christians are struggling, especially mm -hmm. the Christians are in the black community. Right. We struggling. Right. Well, they are struggling. Mm -hmm. Um reason reason being for that is because they are taught whatever situation they're going through, oh God is just testing me. Mm -hmm. You know, you are mm -hmm. always going through a test, you know, mm -hmm. but he knew you before you were born, but at the same time you're still going through a test. You mm -hmm. know, or if um something that you prayed for that you really needed or you wanted or even if it's not a want, it's a need. Right. And it don't come through and you pray for it and you believe and you had faith in it, mm -hmm. then you just you're gonna still take the blame, well maybe on um, God testing my faith right now. That's what I want to ask. I, I wanted to ask, is their belief system built on faith or fear? That's what I was trying yeah. to say. Oh, that's what I was trying to say. So that's the question I want to pose to the Christians. It's you know, definitely is your belief based on faith or fear? Yeah, it has to be fear. Because you know, um you are so afraid to you know this place called hell mm -hmm. and they're telling you about you're going to be there for all eternity that mean you ain't never getting up mm -hmm. right so that 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 in the back of your head caused so much fear that you know you don't even much want to question question anything right. because you're going to feel like you're so evil right but yet you can be you know deep down inside you are a good person mm -hmm. you you will help anybody mm -hmm. you know at any level that you are capable of doing it Right. So um, it would definitely be a case of they have fear, right? More than you know, they are believing into. Um, well, they they do believe into the ideology that they are going in, but but big part of that is fear. So if their belief is based on fear, is it because of lack of, lack of knowledge of what they actually believe in, or is it they just? I don't know. I, I, I feel it's lack of knowledge. You it's, fear because you don't know. Yeah, it's it's a lack of knowledge. Um, and then you also have the 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 pastor that's giving him giving them his interpretation. He's pretty mm -hmm. much guiding them to believe um that concept or his idea of the Bible mm -hmm. that um he's preaching. Right. You know, so that's that be the path that they go. You know, because you always hear the pastor said. The pastor said, you know, so it's it's being taught and this been going on for generations. You know, that's why we are so deep into it. Mm. Because our mama taught taught mm. us this, which taught our grandmother mm. and our great great grandmother, mm. and, and you just keep going on. But mm. if you keep going far back right. enough, you're gonna start seeing that it was forced on to our people. Right. You know, so then you have to question yourself like, okay, well if it was forced and it didn't come to us, we did not bring this here with us. It's not our culture, you know, um, and, and one thing that you touched on with the generations and generations of tradition into the Christian faith. Um, one thing we never consider and we never even, it never even enters in our brain that maybe grandma or great grandpa was wrong. Yeah. Because they was, they were, they were doing the best with what they had. Yes. You I know? Mean, at that point in time, in their lifetime, the information that was available to them, this was the best they can do right. with that information at that time. Mm. But today we live in a whole different era. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have, I mean, we don't need encyclopedias no more. Mm. We can go right here to Google and pull up anything right. that you want right. to research, you know, and then you can research this and then you can go and, and find an opposing view and mm -hmm. then you can break it down yourself. Right. Look at the argument and look at the evidence and let the evidence speak for itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't need nobody to interpretate when interpretate something for you when the evidence is going to tell tell the story itself. Right. You something know? that you said earlier, we didn't have uh, we didn't have the Bible until 1611 when it was mass, produ mass produced mm -hmm. and if I'm not saying it wrong uh, shout out to Unk because he always said this um, before Gutenberg, who wrote the Bible? Who, I mean, how did you get the Bible? Yep. You know, before yep. Gutenberg uh, mass produced the Bible, before he well, invented the printing, the printing press. press. You know, so where did it come from? You know, how do you have all these collections of books mm -hmm. if the first book wasn't done to the Gutenberg Bible? Exactly. So, you know, you so know what were you writing on? You know, and where are all these books at now? Before well, Gutenberg invented the printing press, where are the written Bibles? Where are, where's the original text? Exactly. That's, that's the what are the footnotes? Right Where are all the footnotes at? What, what, if you don't have the original, mm -hmm. how can you say it ever existed? Here's my last thing. In the last 10 seconds of this video, I'm going to write. I, I employ all Christians to learn what the councils are and how many councils were they. 
Yes. So yeah, we're going to end the video with that right there. That's powerful yeah, right that's there. That's powerful, bro. Peace.